Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Dudley Taft, good to see you again, and welcome to episode 6 of Dudley's World of Guitar! Okay, so in today's episode, I thought it would be interesting to look at five different guitars of mine that I find very useful in the studio and on stage. I have lots of guitars, but these are five of the ones that I use the most. And uh, I thought it would be interesting to show you the different characteristics that each one has. So what I'm gonna do is uh, talk about each one individually, pluck on it a little bit, demonstrate a little bit, and then after I've showed you all five guitars, we're going to use them in a sentence essentially playing them over a section of a song called One in a Billion, which is off the Cosmic Radio CD. And um, I'm going to cut back and forth between the different guitars and let you know which amps I'm using uh, so you can kind of hear it all in like a little minute and a half solo uh, at the end. And then at the end of the episode, there's another stupid Dudley trick. So uh, let's get started with guitar number one. Okay, so guitar number one is a nineteen ninety ninety one custom shop seafoam green. Rosewood neck uh, fretboard Stratocaster. And uh, this was on the wall at a music store uh, in Seattle. And it was called American Music, I think. And uh, anyway, you know, it's just kind of a weird color. And I was younger, and I don't know if I was really into the whole seafoam green dealio, but. Uh, uh, I kept playing it and it just kind of resonated uh, pretty well. So um, this is probably a two-piece body. It's alder and uh, the uh, maple neck is a uh, bird's eye and that's nice. It's, uh, it's a very hard, um, you know, version of maple. <laughs> So just something about this guitar I really liked, and I had the neck V'd out. Um, I put my own pickups in there, a Seymour Duncan classic stack in there, and then I think these are both uh, Van Zant Vintage Plus um, pickups, which I really, really like. So. Uh, it's plugged into the Fender right now. Very, very stratty, very nice, but not overly bright. Um, even on this setting. But it vibrates nicely when you start putting a little gain on it. Anyway, uh, I like the way that it it um, responds like in a live setting because that's really when the rubber meets the road for me with the guitar. It can sound great in the living room, but when you go play it on stage with your gear, you know if it's going to work or not. Anyway, uh, this one works consistently well. It's mellower sounding uh, as far as Stratocasters go, but I really, really like it. 
So, here's some more through the fender. Okay, so through the Marshall without any extra gain. get heavy metal you know with it but then again it is a 74 Marshall JMP so <laughs> so uh, but this you know Stratocasters to me sound really bright through Marshalls you know um, Marshalls for me are better suited to the humbucking pickup, but that doesn't mean I, I don't use it. And sometimes um, I'll record both amps together and get the top end from the Marshall, which you just it just can't, it doesn't it's not replicated anywhere that I've I've heard in any modeling or any of that uh, stuff. So. Um. <laughs> And it stands up to modern day metal amps too. The old 74 JMP, it's just killer. Okay, the next guitar is a Gibson 335 .neck reissue. Um, this guy was made sometime around 1995. And uh, I bought it in, I think it was 98 or something. So I've had it since then. And this was my primary guitar that I used when I was in a band called Second Coming. And uh, there was a lot of hard rock going on uh, in that band. And it was kind of funny that I ended up using this guitar for that because, you know, when I looked at it at first, I kind of thought of it as a, as a jazz guitar, you know? You know, this kind of... But, you know, uh, I don't play jazz, and I wanted to rock out with it. So <clears throat> I replaced the pickups, which I found to be tubby, really tubby in that thing. I didn't like the low end. So I actually called Lindy Fralin, and we discussed this. Uh, great guy, by the way, Lindy. You can call him up on the phone. He'll make you pickups. Just describe what you want, and kaboom, he'll make it for you. 
So what we did was we got some humbuckers in here that are lower output than say a typical um, humbucker. And I, I might be wrong on these values, but I think if a regular bridge pickup is like maybe a nine and a half or a 10 or somewhere in there, this is like an eight or a seven and a half. And then this is an eight. It's a little stronger because you need a little more. Um, that's what he said um, out of the neck pickup. But anyway, uh, I really found the low end tightened up considerably with these pickups. And so I could go into a high gain situation. At that point, I was playing through a Soldano SLO 100 <laughs> for my dirty sound. So it was a pretty crazy combo, but it worked very well. Um, so this guitar is very, very versatile. You know, um, I find this guitar to be uh, more of the guitar I go to for chimey, um, humbucking, clean tones rather than the Les Paul. It just has this, I don't know, something about it. Maybe it's because the pickups have less output. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. it through the Marshall. No gain. Kind of sounds a little bit like a Malcolm Young tone to me a little bit. So if you put a little gain on it, nice crunchy tone. Really loaded up with some gain. Okay, next guitar up is one of the very first Relic guitars that Fender made. In fact, it's serial number 199. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool and a bit different for Stratocasters. First of all, it's a one-piece body, which is relatively rare for Strats. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and this is a wonderful piece of swamp ash. So this guitar is, is pretty lightweight, <clears throat> which is nice. Now the neck is um, a bit like the neck on the green Strat that I showed you. It's bird's eye maple, and it's very hard. Um, uh, and, but in spite of the fact that it's hard, it doesn't have a fretboard on it, so it's a little bit more sensitive to temperature changes and humidity changes. In fact, um, I usually carry a screwdriver around whenever I take this on the road because I'll have to make truss rod adjustments, um, you know, every 
I don't know, it seems like every few days sometimes. Um, and luckily I can stick a screwdriver in there and not have to take the neck off because that would be a real pain in the butt. But anyway, <clears throat> I bought this guitar and I, at that point in my life, I was in Second Coming and we were a real hard rock band and, and I wasn't really looking for a Stratocaster, but the owner of the music store, um, American Music, uh, called me up, Billy Stapleton is his name, and he said, hey, you might want to uh, check this out. It's one of the first, um, you know, relic guitars that they're going to release. Might be pretty interesting. Well, he ended up hating them because they put a bunch of, I don't know what kind of finish they put on the back of the neck, but that doesn't make any difference to me because I have them, I have my luthier shave the neck down because I like a really thin neck. Um, if you know anything about strats in the uh, early 80s, they came out with the vintage reissue series, Stratocaster American made, and the necks were thinner than any strat necks up until that point. But I had no idea. I just learned how to play on that. And when I picked up another Strat and it had a really big neck, I struggled mightily to, to play it. So I have all my Strat necks at least V'd out. And uh, most of the time, take, uh, you know, take a good amount of wood off the back of the neck. So um, the pickups that came in this were sort of their relic pickups, maybe Texas Special Relic or something. And I kept the middle pickup because I like the way it sounds. Um, the uh, bridge pickup I replaced with a Seymour Duncan Classic Stack, and there's a Van Zant Vintage Plus here in the neck position. Um, after I pulled it out of the closet and started playing it for a while and bringing it to band practice and finally gigging with it, I realized how amazing this guitar is. Um, and that's probably the case with most of the guitars that I, I uh, use the most and love the most. They maybe weren't that, you know, uh, sexy or amazing in, at, at the beginning, but over time I've learned to really appreciate the special individualistic things that each one of these guitars do. So, here's it through the Fender. Kind of nice. It has pretty good sustain for a Stratocaster. So if I put put the claw on there. Um, you can get some nice harmonics. Off the note if you pick it in the right spot. really like the way that sounds. Um, this guitar, when I'm soloing, I usually have a couple of pedals on um, to really kind of push it hard. And that also really shows you the character of the guitar as well. I mean, maybe flattened out like a roadkill, but... <laughs> Now let's hear it through the Marshall. Little more of that Marshall grit and that uncomparable Marshall sparkling top end. And uh, this thing sure has a lot of high end 
to feed it. Kind of nice. So let's uh, put a little drive on there. Pretty nice. Put a little more drive on there. Get nice and chewy. Anyway, there you go. Stratocaster, Relic. Um, by the way, this is Mary Kay Kohler. So, but I don't call it Mary Kay, I just call it the Relic. Mary Kay sounds like I'm selling cosmetics or something. I don't do that. I wear cologne. Okay, so the next guitar up is an Eastman T58V. So, this is a uh, Chinese-made guitar. It's actually pretty nice. Um, and it's made to be almost exactly like a Chet Atkins Tennessean. Uh, it has TV Jones pickups. And, of course, a Bigsby tremolo. Which is very nice. And it's a... Uh, it's an extremely different kind of guitar for me. Um, when I bought it in New York City um, about a year ago, I thought it was going to be kind of a couch guitar. You know, just keep it, it looks nice, keep it in the living room, you know, when you're hanging out, you're not plugging it in or anything, and just want to, you know, futz around on the guitar while you're sitting there. But after I played it for a while, I realized that it's really kind of cool, and I kind of fell in love with it <laughs> after playing it for a couple of months. And I'm, I kind of wrapped my head around the, the differences here between this and all the other electric guitars I have. First of all, you can't get up very high on the neck like you can on some other guitars, so you better be careful about what you're going to try to play on it. Um, and the TV Jones pickups really are kind of this hollowed out sound, you know, um, really I'm used to the mid range that I get for my strats and, and Les Pauls and so forth. And this guitar just has a totally different sound and it's taken me a little while to figure out what type of amplifier complements this guitar. And at the moment, I'm, I'm using it with a 5-watt Swart amplifier, kind of one of those boutique uh, dealios, and it's probably better suited to that than either of these amps, although almost anything sounds good through the uh, Fender Deluxe. <laughs> Strats or the 335 or the Les Paul. And that's kind of its specialty. If you have it in the right amp, I find that really you want both these pickups on or you want this one. That's kind of its tone. This thing by itself is okay. Maybe you can play some lead lines on there or something, but the guitar really likes to be in this zone. Um, guitarists like to say uh, when they get a new guitar might be a few songs in there and there's definitely a few songs in this guitar if you're familiar with my cosmic radio album 
I wrote um, Relentless on this with my daughter, uh, Ashley Charmé. And I wrote um, the song I'm a Believer on this guitar and used it um, to track it on the album. So you can hear it there if you like. It's definitely tougher to, to bring this into a rock situation, but you know, what the heck, give it a try. Definitely not something I would play at a gig unless it was a real quiet gig because I'm sure it's gonna feed back like a mofo. Although it didn't do too bad when we played the Facebook Live sessions and I used it. Okay, so now through the Marshall with no gain. <laughs> gain on it just for fun. too bad through the marshal. I actually kind of impressed by that. Anyway, that's the story with this guitar. It, it just keeps surprising me. And I really, really like it for, you know, relatively inexpensive uh, guitar. It's turned out to be a real find. Okay, and the next guitar is Les Paul. This is, oh, it's about a 2000 three, I think maybe 2004, custom shop, Les Paul, vintage old spec, 1960, Les Paul standard reissue or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's about eight pounds, <clears throat> eight ounces, a little on the heavier side. Um, now I have put uh, Lindy Fralin pickups in here and they're relatively um, high output, not as high as an EMG, but um, you know, a little hotter than the ones that I put in the 335. So you're gonna get more, um, you know, you're gonna get more of a push at the front of your amp because the pickups are definitely hotter. Now, having grown up playing strats, uh, it took me a while to get used to Les Paul. I mean, there's a, tons of things that are strange about a Les Paul if you played Strats for a couple of decades before you got one. So, um, it's just the weight is all over here, and so it's a little different. A Strat and so it seems a little bit more balanced to me with some more wood over here and the horns and everything. Um, so that took a little getting used to. And then, you know, when I started playing it, I was pretty much just going full on this pickup, full blast. Um, or maybe this pickup, full blast. Or mixing them together. And that's okay. But um, I, I kind of figured out as I was... Um, playing it more and more that it's really cool if you blend these pickups and you can actually just put a tiny bit of this pickup in there. It just 
just gives it a little bit more meat. So it's going through the fender now. But there's one thing <clears throat> that you can't do with a Stratocaster that you can do with a Les Paul, and that is really get that low, mid, humbucker sound that we're all really familiar with. So let's listen to the Marshall. Um, no gain at all. We're most of the way there, you know, towards that sort of classic Marshall and uh, Gibson tone. Put a little gain on it. <clears throat> Really wonderful tones you can get out of this thing. You can go full on, you know. But you can also kind of get that nice, you know, kind of ZZ top, you know. Kind of tone, you know. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was definitely uh, very fun for me to make, and uh, it was good to whip those five guitars into shape, you know, tune them up, wipe them down, get them all ready for action. That was a lot of fun. Uh, as much fun as you can have in these COVID days. So stay tuned uh, for more videos like this, 
And we're also going to uh, take a look at, you know, some shows that I did uh, in Europe, special places in Europe, and then some other fun stuff about uh, studio uh, recording and gear and pedals and so forth. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening. And now here's the stupid Dudley trick. Okay, so you know how when you go outside and it's really bright and you've been inside for a while where it's dark, your eyes hurt because the sun makes your pupils dilate. Well, this photographer taught me that if you close your eyes, point them towards the sun, it helps your pupils adjust more easily and it's much more comfortable.